It's 2 a.m. and I'm 10 feet under Fifth Avenue, surrounded by some of the most affluent sewage in New York. Bob, friend and drain engineer, is helping me with my flow cyclometer machine, which has spent the last week sorting through the sewage of the rich and famous of Condo 1049. I detach a small flask and stash it carefully in my backpack. There's around 350 milliliters of brownish sludge there with a, a decent yield. We head back to ground level, where I scrub down and a change of clothes await, though it'll take about two days to fully remove the smell. Things I know about Condo 1049, courtesy of Jules, the concierge, who likes his whiskey on the rocks and also free. Residents include a Miss L. Newington. Miss Newington receives a weekly package from Thermosci Biome Best TM. The package contains the supplements necessary to maintain a gut full of biome burn microbes, which have an almost unparalleled ability to absorb and metabolize sugars and fats licensed for the treatment of diabetes. This package probably cost Miss Newington upwards of $7,000. I also know, in the preceding week, Miss Newington received four deliveries from Carl's Jr., three from Krispy Kreme Donuts, eight from Burger King, and two from Domino's. <laughs> in this time, she has received three visitors, none of whom stayed for more than a few hours. If Miss Newington is diabetic, She's certainly going about it in a funny way. The flow cytometer under Fifth Avenue has hopefully spent the last week identifying and saving the biome burn microbes, which resided briefly in Miss Newington's gut. In an hour or so, I'll have them in a container of dry ice on the way to the quick chem quick lab in Mexico, and I'll be a thousand dollars or so the richer. It's not exactly how I imagine myself using my PhD in molecular biology, but it certainly pays the bills in a way a postdoc position at Columbia spectacularly doesn't. You may ask why these microbes are quite so valuable. Let me recount a bit of history. Fermosci first managed to engineer super sugar and fat burning microbes over 10 years ago. They turn out to be great at curing mice with diabetes and easy to control with antibiotics. Unfortunately, nature being what it is, it didn't take long for these microbes to start sharing genes with other gut microbes, learning to evade control and generally misbehave. I guess the experience with Monsanto's GM crops should have made this a rather obvious development, so someone at Fermosai had a brainwave. Don't use regular microbes, use xenomicrobes. These synthetic microbes were made out of molecules not found in nature, xenonucleic acids and xenopeptides, being so completely different they couldn't talk or share or recombine with anything else. And they required regular supplementation of these xenonutrients to survive. Stop the supplements, the xenomicrobes die and normal microbes return. Job done. Headlines of synthetic microbes cure diabetes in mice were shortly followed by convenient media stories like, my father died of diabetes. Why is the FDA blocking this miracle treatment? The fast-tracked human trials happily confirm these xenomicrobes, now branded as thermosci biome burn, could cure humans of diabetes with the interesting side effect of significant weight loss, despite the trial participants eating pretty much whatever they wanted. Of course, treatment didn't come cheap. Xenobiotic manufacture is a complicated process. The economic burden of diabetes was over $250 billion in the US. Diabetes meant a lifetime of blood tests, injections, complications. Compared to that, what was 50, maybe $100,000? The sudden epidemic of previously undiagnosed diabetes among the portion of the population with 50,000 to spare was second only to the sudden epidemic of private diabetologists interested in diagnosing diabetes, pre-diabetes, almost diabetes, and even 
could one day turn into diabetes. If, however, you had diabetes, but not the spare 50,000, like, say, 400 million people, or 8% of the world, you might think for a second that it would be really great if maybe others could develop and improve things, maybe make alternative treatments, except for the fact that Fermo Sci published the bare minimum and patented the hell out of it all. Legal fucking fortress. You work for Fermo Sci or you go home. Heck, you couldn't even grow the bugs to study them. That said, if you could get your hands on the bugs, you could purify them into the xenonutrients required. You just need to find a source such as a convenient biome burn patient. After all, bugs go in one end, bugs come out the other end. Fermosai tried to claim ownership of the end product, so to speak, but the Supreme Court reaffirmed that a patient is legally the owner of their own human tissue, and as such, their own shit, and could do what the hell they like with it. Fermosai responded by putting their prices up and offering huge rebates for patients who returned their carefully collected end products. However, happily for me, as it turns out, a certain section of society for whom money is no object preferred instead to continue to crap how, where, and when they wished. Equally happily, once the public sewer system, the material ceases to be their or Fermo Psy's property. If you're not Fermo Psy and you want to study the bugs, or maybe you want to treat your diabetes at a fraction of the cost, or maybe you want to treat your weight too, then ChemQuick Mexico is who you contact. ChemQuick pay handsomely to those who can find supplies of biome burn microbes. If they're less than forthcoming on their advertising about their sources, one can understand it. So if you take a repurposed flow cytometer, your lab is throwing out a battery pack Add $30 in, in drinks for a Manhattan concierge on the lookout for biome burn parcels. In no time at all, you've got yourself a tidy earner. Yesterday, Jules mentioned he'd seen a number of ChemQuick packages going to the condo next door. I might have to set up another collection point. After all, what God giveth, God taketh away, and possibly giveth back again in easy-to-swallow capsule form.